In this video, I'm going to do an introduction to the Maven Assembly plugin. The Maven Assembly plugin is used to assemble archives from your Maven project. There are two main formats that the Assembly plugin supports. The zip file format, which is used by jar files, war files, and ear files, as well as the zips themselves, and the tar file format. When creating a tar file, you can also specify compression, either bzip or gzip. As a result, the output file will be compressed. The first thing you need to do to use the Maven Assembly plugin is add the plugin definition to the POM file. In order to save a bit of time, I've uh, already, t already added it here. Most of this is boilerplate. The only real important thing is the descriptor file, because the majority of the configuration will reside in this file. Just to go through over the rest of this, this is an ID which assigns to an execution. You only really need to be worried about this if you need to run more than one packaging description in a single file. The last two things are you want to put it in the packaging phase so that it runs after your main artifacts have been assembled into a jar file or whatever else, and there's only one valid goal which is single. The next step after defining the assembly plugin in the POM file is to write the assembly descriptor. So in the POM file we called that example.xml, so I'm going to create that now, and then just paste in some boilerplate code. The top here is just schema definition, and here we're just saying that the output format we want is a zip file. So now let's pick up the first file that we want to put into here, and we need to define the source path, so I'm going to pick this file here and just copy its path and paste it in. And I don't want to hard code this path because it won't work on anybody else's machine, so I'm going to use the maven property project.basedir. And note the small lowercase d on basedir. So let's see if that actually works by doing a maven clean install. And hopefully that should work for us. And if we then change directory into the target directory, we should see that we've now got the jar file, which is the main archive, and we now have a zip file, which we're also assembling. So I'm going to use the jar command to take a quick look inside here. And what we see here is that the name of the archive itself has been prepended to the path, which is something that we do not want to occur. So we need to fix that. In order to fix that, we're going to have to add an additional property, which is to say include base directory false. And let's give that another whirl now. So I'm going to clean install this again. And let me just clear the screen, go back to the target directory, and take another look. jar minus tf assembly plugin dot zip. And we've now removed that path. Now it's kind of annoying to have to add one file at a time, so instead of doing that, what we really want to be able to do is add an entire directory. So we do that with the file set directive. And the main thing we need here is the directory which we're going to pick up. So I'm going to pick up this directory, the scripts directory, which contains uh, uh, batch files for Windows and Unix. So I'm just going to copy and paste my path over here and then add in the scripts directory and save and take a quick look at that when I run that one through and then let's have a quick look at the output from that now as you can see here there's a problem because what it's actually done is it's taken the full source path source main scripts and added it in which we don't want so we need to fix that so the way that we fix that is we set the output directory inside of the zip file so output directory we're just going to set to slash and then let's try that again. And as you can see, it now has put it in the root. At this point, you may be wondering why I've got two copies of config.properties. The reason that I added the second one is that I'm actually trying to show you how to do uh, Maven uh, filtering. So what I want to happen is I want to substitute in values from the Maven build into this file as I build the assembly. 
So I've just, as an example, take, then taken the project.group artifact ID inversion. However, you could also use uh, parameters defined as, with the minus D parameter that you take on the command line if you want to do it that way. So in order to actually turn the filtering on, it's pretty easy. You can do it either on a file set or on a file entry, and you just simply say filtered equals to true. And then if we switch back to our build and rebuild this, and then move into the target directory again. I'm just going to create a directory called unpack and cd into there so that I can actually extract the archive and take a look at the contents. So assembly.zip file and now when I actually take a look at this config.properties you'll see that each of the values has been substituted from what we would have been using inside the IDE. So if I take a one quick look back there, you'll see that I had project.group ID, but inside the file we actually have com.example. So up until this point we've been adding files individually or adding entire directories to the assembly. What we really want to do is to be able to add all of the dependencies of this project automatically to the assembly and the Maven assembly plugin has a mechanism for doing that which is a dependency set. Now the most simplest configuration we can use is simply this with just declaring the dependency set and what that will do is if we build it we will see that it will actually once it comes back here it will give us all of the dependencies of the project inside the jar file so the, we got the commons IO which is a direct dependency and then we've got the actual output of this project itself the assembly example which is also being packaged into inside the jar file inside the zip file sorry now if we didn't want the the jar file itself of this project I can say use project artifact false and rebuilding that and take another look and now we've only got the direct dependencies of the project so you can use flexibility here to do this either way however I actually want this particular archive but I don't want it to be directly in the root like this I want to create a subdirectory called lib so the way I do that is I do use the output directory which we've seen before and I'll just set it to lib and then take another look once at this and as you can see now it's created a lib directory and it's put my two uh, jar files that I want in here. So the next thing I want to do is I want to make it a little bit easier for the end user by including a JDK inside the zip file. I've already prepared a JDK in the directory above this one JDK 167, sorry 1627 so if we just take a quick look at that file uh, JDK blah 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 then you can see it's just got the whole of the JDK tied up this is actually for Windows so let me go back to the project and in the POM file I've already got the dependency ready to go and then I will go import the change go back to this uh, dependency set and I don't want it to go in the lib directory so I'm going to need to exclude it from that particular directory so I will add an exclude and here it's just the it's just the artifact ID followed by the artifact followed by the jar file and then I would normally put the version number but I don't care what the version number is so I'm just adding star so if I build the project again uh, then you should see no impact as a result of adding that because I've excluded the jar file even though I've added it target assembly dot zip and you can see it's not in the archive. So now what I want to do is I want to explicitly include that particular jar file in the root. So let's do that. I'm not going to set an output directory this time. However, I am going to explicitly set which files to be included. So include and then I'm going to take the exact same path here and rebuild it's not a path, it's a artifact ID specifier and it's taken a lot longer because the JDPK is quite big however if I then go back here and list it we can now see that we've got it but unfortunately it is now a jar file which is not quite what we want what we actually want is we want it to be unpacked 
And fortunately, the dependency set command gives us that option, unpack true. And let's take a quick look at that. And it's really taken a long time now. And now let's, I'm going to clear the screen here so make it easier to scroll. So we've now got the entire JDK has been unpacked in all of its glory in the root of the in the archive. However, there's a couple of things I don't like. I don't like the fact we've got a sample directory and a bit further up there's a demos directory which is also not what we really want to be unpacking into this archive. So let's suppress those. So this first include is actually including the artifact. What I then need to do is exclude from inside of what I'm unpacking. So unpack options excludes and then the first thing I want to exclude is going to be the JDK I need to get the full path here JDK demo and slash star 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 means it's not just a one directory level but everything below this level and the second thing I want to exclude is the sample directory so let's take another look at that should be a little quicker now because uh, we're not unpacking all those extra files and recompressing them. Again I'll clear the screen just to make it easy to scroll back and this time we have a bin, a JRE and that's that. So to wrap up, first of all we covered adding files to the archive and we also covered the filter directive which allows you to substitute values into the file that gets put into the archive. Then we covered file sets which allow you to take an entire directory or subset of a directory by using includes and exclude filters and target those into the archive. Again you can choose which output path you want inside the archive. Finally we covered dependency sets which allow you to include the artifacts that are part of your project defined in your POM file dependency section into the archive. Normally you just need to set the output directory and it will take all of the artifacts from your project and put them in the output directory. However you can exclude individual artifacts or alternately you can give an explicit include list. I use the unpack directive in order to be able to take all the contents and lay them out in an unpacked fashion into the archive and in so doing I was then able to exclude specific files from the unpacked archive. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful.